I remember the day that I got deported. They deported me to Juarez. I mean, it was heartbreaking. Being deported is heartbreaking. And not being able to see my children. My children were young. My wife, basically, she raised my, my children. And it's not fair that a Frank or any of the, of the other deported veterans that, that they served, you know, the United States, and for them just to get the boot, just, just get rid of them like, like they're nothing. Immigrants have served this nation's military since its founding. And since September 11th, over 130,000 non-citizen veterans have been naturalized. We sat down with Texas Civil Rights Project staff attorney, Emma Hilbert, who authored a report on deported Texas veterans. Land of the free, no home to the brave. So when you do enter military service as a non-citizen, there is a law under immigration law that allows you to apply for naturalization and actually do so on an expedited basis. But that process, is, as you may know, is, very, is actually tricky and a lot of people fall through the cracks. People within the military don't necessarily assist people with actually getting that paperwork done. I've spoken to veterans who have said, oh, you know, we took the military oath. I thought that was the citizenship oath. Or, oh, I, I served for years. I can't believe I'm not automatically a citizen. I didn't know I had to do anything else. Let me back things up a little bit. In 1965, the Immigration and Nationality Act was passed and allowed non-citizen service members to apply for naturalization. Skip forward to 1996 when the Clinton administration signed the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act. This widened the scope of which crimes made an immigrant eligible for deportation and reduced the amount of leeway that immigration judges had to exercise discretion and whether or not to deport an immigrant. The priority enforcement program that the Obama administration had put in place that really targeted more violent offenders, more serious crimes, was taken away under the Trump administration. And so that's why you, it leaves the door wide open, for example, for vets who have only a, non, a non-violent minor crime that they've committed. I'm here in El Paso, Texas, to talk to deported veteran Frank de la Cruz. But first, I caught up with U.S. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar to talk about a bill in Congress that could help folks like Frank come home. H.R. 1078, the Repatriate Our Patriots Act, is really an important bipartisan bill that's been filed in response to the alarming news of many of our veterans being deported. It would require that the AG immediately rescind the the deportation order of the veterans, but they do have to meet the requirement of not having been convicted of a violent crime. The bill was carried by Vicente Gonzalez, a Democrat from Texas and Don Young, a Republican from Alaska. Escobar co-sponsored the bill, along with Texas Rep. Sylvia Garcia, who mentioned Frank in the TCRP report in a subcommittee meeting. We must not forget the people behind these numbers, like Mr. Frank de la Cruz, who came to the United States as a young boy with his family in 1978. State leaders have the ability and the power, the pardon power, the, uh, the power of programs and funding to assist in this effort as well. We can't say that we support our veterans if we only support some veterans. If we say we support our vets, then it means we support all vets. Here I am crossing the bridge into Juarez. We're gonna go to Frank's house and sit down with him and interview him. I was born in Ciudad Juarez. When I was, what, six or seven, my family migrated to the United States for a better life. I am the only that I know of in my immediate family that has ever joined the military. And I was in the Persian Gulf War. They uh, said uh, Saddam Hussein shot some chemical chemical warfare. I wasn't under the hull of the ship in the engine room. Not being able to see what's going on, I mean, you're, there's a fear in you, within you, and, and you're nervous, and we just look at each other and just, hey. I mean, we were out there in the water for 30, 40 days, so you hit a port and all you do is look f- for some fun. 
And every year, I'm gonna tell you every soldier, every sailor, everything we did was just go to a bar and drink. Came back to the United States, there was some sense of um, urgency all the time. And I just couldn't handle the anxiety. And I started drinking. I picked up um, uh, 3DWIs. On my third one, they made it a felony, which made me deportable. I never thought I could be deported because I'm a, I'm a veteran, you know. I went, I started this country, and I was legally in the United States. I was a permanent resident. I moved. I moved to Mexico. So I did that for about 10 years until the violence really got bad here in Juarez, and I decided that I don't want my girls to, you know, to to be in danger here. So I told Frank, hey, I'm, I'm going back home. I'm a hobbit. I'm, I, don't, I don't go outside for nothing. I've been robbed a couple of times. My wife comes and goes from El Paso to Juarez, and uh, I'm always worried about her. Something might happen to her. The crime rate is now real high. It, it affects him. It affects him mentally. I, I could see him when he calls me at night. I could hear him in his voice, you know, I'm, I'm here by myself. I don't know what to do and just, it, it breaks my heart that he doesn't have a good, tight relationship with his kids. He, they refuse to come to Juarez. They don't, they don't want to come to Juarez. Nobody likes coming to Juarez to visit. It's been hard, but I guess after so long, we're just kind of used to it. It's just the routine now. Difficult, to say the least. He misses out on everything. And in turn, my mom misses out on a lot of stuff, too. I mean, he's been over there 20 plus years. So, you know, where, where does that change come from? Or who starts that? You know, this isn't the first interview that I do in hopes of that. And I don't know whatever happened to the other ones. I don't know where they led to, or did they make a difference, or they didn't. So I hope this does help, and that somewhere somebody's going to see this, and it's going to open their eyes and be like, mm -hmm, we probably shouldn't be doing this to veterans. To become a, an American citizen, uh, it was never mentioned when I was there. Nobody ever told me to, you know, go to the career counselor, go, go see if you can um, become a US citizen. None of that was introduced to me, or was it ever said. I mean, I wish it, I wish they would have said something. When I would have signed up, you know, I would have. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in this situation. We stick together through through thick and thin. We're still here. So hopefully, one day, one day, um, the government and, and and God willing, He'll allow us to go back home. <laughs>